I think I found it. Look at this person's beautiful bonsai garden. The bus I was supposed to take up to this hostel is gone. It's It left an hour ago. There's no more to get up there. So I'm kind of stuck and I need to, yeah, figure out how I'm gonna get up there. Okay, so I made it to my room. It's literally a bunk bed. There is literally no other accommodations in this area that you could book. That's how truly in the middle of nowhere I am. Oh my god, I don't know why I do this to myself, but I found a cave on Google Maps slash I read about it online and as soon as I saw it, I was like, I'm going there and it's called Praying Mantis Cave. Like, I'm going. I'm, I'm obviously going to Praying Mantis Cave. I'll give you this. Mm. Oh. Well, I made it to Doragawa. This area is definitely off the beaten path. Doragawa is located in the village called Tenkawa, a major spiritual haven with healing hot spring onsens, temples, beautiful Japanese gardens, and prime trekking territory. This village is considered a nexus of spiritual power. In fact, the mountain religion known as Shugendo started and flourished here with Mount Omin as a major center of its practices. I've only been hiking for about 20, 30 minutes, but I can already say without a doubt that the absolute mission that it took to get here was worth it. Um, but really the main reason why I decided to come to this region of Japan is because I discovered there is a cave called a praying mantis cave. And you know me, I love praying mantises. I gotta see this thing. So I'm not quite in the area where this cave is meant to be. Best be told, it is not found on any Google map whatsoever. So it's gonna be a little bit of a bushwhacking session, but I'm up for the adventure. So I had read about Praying Mantis Cave online, but couldn't find any photos of it except for this one. So I had to figure out where this place was and I think I found it. I don't usually Google translate every single sign that I see, but for some reason I walked by this truly random spot on the side of the road. I've been walking for like 30 minutes and it's, this is the spot. There is truly nobody here. Now, I couldn't really take any photos inside of Praying Mantis Cave. It is considered a highly religious location of the Shugendo religion. So I was just able to enjoy it with my own two eyes. But here are some videos of what the area looked like. This area where Praying Mantis Cave is was just so peaceful and serene. I literally cannot believe that I was the only person here. Right beside Praying Mantis Cave was Bat Cave, and it definitely got its name for a reason. Saw lots of other local wildlife here, but still no praying mantises. One thing I actually just can't get over is that people live here. Like, look at this person's beautiful bonsai garden. I, I'm speechless. I would recommend renting a car if you're heading up to Tenkawa Village. However, if you don't, that is okay because there is public transportation that is very inexpensive to take around. However, they are very infrequent in how often they come. So make sure that you check a local timetable before taking the bus. Apart from Praying Mantis Cave, Daragawa is actually home to many different cave systems, including this one, the Goyomatsu Limestone Cave. 
The cave is illuminated by colorful lights, is fairly small but easy to walk through, and keep in mind it is slippery in some places. 400 yen or four dollars to go into the caves, and to my surprise, there is a little monorail or a little train that takes you back down the mountain. I'm so excited. Oh my god, it looks like a freaking log tree. I am so pumped. I gotta get on this. I just got off of the rickety monorail log ride and I have never seen so many people lined up for a ride that is so lame. I don't know where all these people came from. I have not seen this many people since I got to Doragawa. The entire time I was on it, I was just thinking, I wish I walked. Low key. Another spot I learned about from locals that I just had to try and find was the Doragawa lookout. I found a random trail that seemed to be leading upwards, so after crossing several beautiful bridges and streams, empty log cabins that had seemingly been completely abandoned, and a peaceful five kilometers later, I found what could only be the lookout, which was absolutely breathtaking. I cannot believe I didn't pass a single other soul while trekking this trail, especially during the busy summer season. I also can't believe how hot it was, but also how pleasantly pest free it was. Not one single mosquito bite during the entire three days I hiked through this region, and I cannot tell you how happy that made me. Doragawa has definitely been one of the most beautiful and serene places I have ever ever, ever had the pleasure of visiting. And I think my favorite part about it is that it is so far off the beaten track that there is practically nobody here. Doragawa and Mount Omin is also home to one of two world heritage routes in the world. What that means is there is basically a pilgrimage route that you can walk through this valley that is very historical and of course very spiritual. The water quality in Doragawa, there's actually actually an onsen that I'll be going to after this, but even just the water that's flowing through the canyon here is mildly alkaline, which is really good for your skin. So you best believe I took a few swims while I was here. And the best part about it is it felt like I had the entire place to myself. The spring waters here are also known as Goro Goro Mitsu, which was recognized as one of the 100 best waters in all of Japan. So make sure to try the mineral water when you visit this spot. You basically cannot film anything as you can imagine, even like the front lobby, you can't film inside. So I couldn't really show you what it looked like in there, but um, it was very relaxing. So I feel like there are a few things that you need to know before you go to a Japanese onsen. For starters, be prepared to be completely naked. Like you are fully nude in front of strangers. There's no bathing suits, there's no bikinis. The men, same thing. You're completely 100% naked. So if you're shy being naked, I wouldn't recommend it. And it's just something that is so different than North American culture. Like you would just never ever see something like that in North America. So I think it's definitely something to lean into and enjoy as part of the Japanese culture. Of course, there is a separate men's and women's side. So if you're going with your husband, your boyfriend, your partner, whatever it might be, you will be separated and in going into your own separate areas. It's 3.30, it's time for lunch for me. So I just found this little spot on the side of the road and they made chicken coconut curry. Mm. Mm. As I was saying, another thing you wanna make sure is that you're checking beforehand if the onsen that you're visiting provides towels or not. I went to one in Tokyo where literally everything was provided, where this onsen, nothing, which is totally fine. However, I did not bring a towel. <laughs> Whoops. So the onsen in Doragawa, definitely worth the visit. It was only $7 and as many hours as you wanna be there. I was there for about an hour and a half. There were only really two baths, one inside, one outside, both hot. It was so relaxing, I feel rejuvenated. My bus is in like two hours, so I'm gonna have my lunch and then do a little 
walk about the town, maybe pick up some little souvenirs, and then head back home. And by home, I mean to my hostel. <laughs> Anyways guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video and getting to see a little precious pocket of Japan that I don't think many people know about. I also want to say to make sure that you're always respecting these really untouched and unscathed areas to keep them pristine and beautiful. If you enjoyed this video, please, please give it a like. Leave me a comment down below and consider subscribing. It really does help this channel grow and it encourages me to get out there and go to more wondrous places to share with you guys. You can expect more travel and nature related content right here on my channel. So thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one.